Good afternoon, everyone. How's it going? Making units fight each other in the StarCraft II editor is an easy job. You just tell whatever guy you want to attack the other guy, and the game engine built entirely around having guys fight does its thing. But what if you're making a cutscene and you want something more dramatic, like a hail of gunfire landing around a group of units, or a shot just barely missing someone? Well, good news, it's possible, and not even that difficult. So just for simplicity's sake, we'll take two marines and say that we want one to shoot at the feet of the other, western style. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure the shooter is on a team set to neutral, otherwise they'll just start shooting our guy as soon as the map loads, and that won't help anyone. To do that, go to Map in the top toolbar, then choose Player Properties. Change Team 2's control dropdown to Neutral, then click OK. At this point, double-click the unit you want on the opposite team, set their player option in the drop-down to the one you just changed, and go ahead and also rename them, especially if they're the same unit type as the target. Next, in the Unit Placement browser, select Shape from the Unit Type drop-down. This will show you a list of, well, shapes that exist in the editor. Go ahead and pick one. I like using the apple because it's at the top of the list. Place a couple apples in front of the unit that's going to be shot at. Then select all of them, go to Edit in the main toolbar, and click Merge Selection. This will put them in a unit group, which you can see in the units list in the main editor window. If you'd like, right-click on them in that list and click Modify Groups. In here, you can add or subtract units to or from the group, see a list of everything in it, and some other stuff, but we're just interested in renaming it. Instead of Unit Group 001, name it something like Shooter Targets. This doesn't have any mechanical relevance, it's just to help you keep track of what's in a map. With that out of the way, go to the Data Editor and select the Models tab. Search for whatever shape you used. In Art Model, click Browse, and search for Invisible Unit, then click OK. You'll notice that the apples are now invisible. In the Data Editor again, head to the Units tab this time. Search for your shape, and change both the life starting and life maximum values to something absurd like 500,000. Really, just anything above the single point it starts with, with the understanding that it'll be taking damage from whatever's shooting it. Okay, time to have all this come together. In the trigger editor, set up a new trigger. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to move forward assuming that you know a little bit about what's going on here, but hopefully you can follow along easy enough if not. First, we need an event to kick things off. If you're making a cutscene, you likely already have something in mind. For this demonstration, I'm just going to have things start when this medic moves onto the region that's sitting on top of this disc. So that's event, unit enters slash leaves region, where the unit is medic, we leave it as enters, and region is what I named gunfight. Again, this is not the important part, this is just how this whole thing will start, and it could be anything you want it to be. For the actual actions of the trigger, choose Issue Order. For the unit, choose Shooter. Where it says Ability Command, click the parentheses to change the category of order to Order Targeting Unit. Then click Ability Command and choose Attack, change Triggering Unit to Random Unit from Unit Group, change Unit Group to Shooter Targets, and replace existing orders can stay how it is. So what we've just done is, after the medic steps on the plate, tell the blue marine to pick an apple and start shooting it. However, it will only pick that one apple and will continue shooting it until it's dead, roughly 500,000 health in the future. But we want something with a little more visual flair, right? That's why we put down more than one apple. So we'll have it change targets periodically. Back in the data editor, find the weapon the marine is equipped with. You can either search the weapons tab if you know its name, or scroll down in the units tab and click on the weapon from there. Find its period, which controls the fire rate. The marine's gun has a period of 0 .8608. Don't change this, just take note of it. Back in the trigger editor, add a weight trigger and set the number to that weapon's period, in this case 0.8608. We could spend a lot of time talking about the next value, but since game speed affects unit fire rate, leave this as game time. Finally, add a new repeat forever action, and drag both existing actions into its folder. And that's it. 
Now, every time the marine fires, it'll select a new random target from the group of apples, creating a nice little bit of variation to the bullet impacts. This is obviously a very simple application of the whole concept, but it's a very powerful bit of trickery that can get your cutscenes looking pretty stylish and dynamic, letting you control combat in a way beyond just having guys slug it out. There is one final point, however, and it's a bit of bad news. For reasons I haven't been able to figure out, some ranged units like the Marauder, Firebat, and Roach here just... can't attack shape units. I'd bet it has something to do with how the various layers of their attacks are created and handled by the game engine, but I don't currently know enough to say why for sure. If you do want to do these fake combats with those units, my suggestion is just to use a unit that isn't otherwise part of your map or cutscene or whatever, and do the same thing with setting its model to the invisible unit and changing the health values and all that. It won't be an elegant solution, but it will get you the effect you're looking for. If you do take that route, you might also want to change the unit's radius in the unit tab so that it doesn't take up space on the map, as well as its squib type in the models tab so that blood isn't just coming out of the ground. Alright, till next time.